welcome to 36th lecture of graph theory. In the last class, we considered the question of deciding an upper bound for the Ramsey number and getting a lower bound for it. In the last class, we showed that R of k is less than equal to 2 to the power 2 k minus 3 right this by using a usual combinatorial argument. Now, in this class we are trying to get a lower bound for r of k, r of k is greater than or equal to 2 raised to k by 2, this is our intention today. Um, recall that the Ramsey number of k is the minimum integer n we can say n of k. So, ok r of k uh, such that if the number of vertices in the graph is greater than or equal to this number, then we are, we are guaranteed that either a complete graph on k vertices or an independent set on k vertices is available in the graph. Now, the question is to decide r of k, finding it exactly is difficult. So, we showed that, but uh, this number has to be less than 2 to the power 2 k minus 3 yesterday. By more sophisticated arguments, we can probably improve a little bit, but uh, we are not interested so we in that now. So, as of uh, now we just are happy by saying that there is an upper bound for this, there is indeed a number like that r of k. Then how do I show a lower bound for this thing? So, when I say 2 raised to k by 2 is a lower bound for r of k, it means that uh, I can show a graph on 2 raised to k by 2 vertices such that neither it has a k clique in it nor it has an independent set on k vertices in it. Such a graph exists. How do I show this? So, it turns out that the best way to attack this problem is by using the probabilistic method. So, this is what we are going to do. Now. So, we will show that for every integer k greater than or equal to 3, the Ramsey number of k satisfies r of k is strictly greater than k by 2. So, here strictly greater. Now, uh, we will prove this thing now. To prove this thing, we um, will consider the probability distribution of graphs g n half here we are taking p equal to half and then so this is we can write it like a little cal g so um, so we are taking a graph from this distribution randomly a random graph we are considering with respect to this probably from this probability space and then let us ask this question, what is the probability of having an independent set of cardinality k in this graph? And uh, then we ask the question, what is the probability that g has a complete graph on k vertices in it? See, if both these probabilities are less than half, then the probability for one of these two events to happen will be less than half plus half namely 1. So, that means, the probability for the complement event to happen namely the probability that uh, the graph has no clique of k vertices and no clique of uh, no independent set of k vertices will happen with some positive probability, non-zero prob probability. 
which means that there indeed exists one outcome, one graph in this probability with respect to this probability space uh, with this property namely no clique on k vertices, no independent set on k vertices. So, uh, to prove this thing we will formally consider what is the probability probability that G has k k in it right. What is the probability how do we we have already we have found a way to upper bound this thing this is less than equal to uh, n choose k because there are n vertices and from this n vertices we can select uh, k vertices in n choose k vertices. Now, this probability that this k vertices indeed form a indeed form a k clique is 1 by 2 raised to k choose to that k into k minus 1 by 2 is not it. So, <coughs> this is essentially uh, how much is this? This is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into up to n minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial into 1 by 2 raised to k square by 2 minus k by 2. So, this numerator here n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus k plus 1 can be substituted with n to the power k because there are k terms here and uh, each of this term n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus k plus 1 all are less than equal to n. So, I can simply write this is less than equal to n power k by k factorial into uh, 1 by 2 to the power k square by 2 minus k by 2 what I can see. Now, k square is greater than or we know that k sorry k factorial is greater than equal to 2 raised to k. Why is it true? Because for instance k equal to 1 this 1 factorial is need not be need not be greater than equal to it is not greater than equal to 2 raised to 1. So, but k equal to 2 4 k this is 2 factorial that is 2 uh, how can it be greater than equal to uh, sorry I am saying. So, you can so when you put 3 here we get when you go put 3 we get 2 raised to 3 is 8 then this is 3 factorial is 6 right. So, therefore, we can substitute by so you can say 4 fact ok fact so, when k k factor for instance this is in fact 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5. So, say for instance 5 so then we can say this is 2 raised to 5 this is 32 how much is this. So, this is 6 into 4 into 5. So, we have 120 here. So, 20 20 into 6 is 120. So, this is bigger right. So, now uh, with 4 we have 1 2 3. So, this is 24 and here it will be 2 raised to 24 2 raised to 4 is 16. So, 24 is greater than equal to 16 this is also true with k equal to 4 onwards this is true k equal to 4 onwards this is true 
while k equal to 3 what will happen this is 6 only while this is 6 only while this is 8. So, that is not true. So, we have to assume that k for, uh, for this to be true for assuming that k factorial is greater than equal to 2 raised to k we should assume that k is greater than 3 right let us assume that. So, what will I do for uh, k less than equal to 3? So, that we can easily verify because you know uh, r of 3 is equal to 6 r of 2 is equal to 2 and uh, so on. So, uh, when you put 2 raised to k by 2 you know all these things uh, it will be uh, immediately clear. For instance, put k equal to 3 2 raised to 1.5 is less than um, 6. So, put uh, k equal to 2 2 raised to 1 is less than equal to 2. So, so for k r greater than equal to k on, uh, greater than equal to 3 we will prove that otherwise um, so we have to put r of k greater than equal to 2. Now, uh, so our statement of the theorem only is being proved for k greater than equal to 3 for k equal to 3 we can easily check it but because we know r of k is equal to 6 for k greater than equal to 4 we will do this thing by uh, by observing that. So, in this k factorial can be substituted by 2 raised to k because k factorial is greater than equal to 2 raised to k for k greater than equal to 4. So, now we will we will get this thing. So, like this, this is less than equal to n raised to k by uh, 2 raised to k into 1 by 2 raised to k square by 2 minus k by 2. When I um, now, suppose n is a number which is less than equal to so suppose I take n equal to 2 raised to k by 2. So, let us take this number. Now, I can substitute this by so this is less than equal to 2 raised to k square by 2 because I am putting n equal to 2 raised to k by 2. So, this is by 2 raised to k into 1 by 2 raised to k square by 2 minus k by 2. So, this will be so here cancelling this and this minus. So, we will get less than equal to 1 by 2 raised to k by 2. Now, I have assumed that k is at least 4 because k equal to 3 case is already considered. So, this will be uh, less than equal to. So, if I put the smallest possible value here k equal to 4 is 1 by 2 right. So, I get that it is less than equal to 1 by 2. So, what we have now done is the calculation uh, of the probability of uh, this event g has a k raise k k in it in uh, an induced complete graph on k vertices in it right. So, we just did it by uh, considering all possible k subsets and we calculated the probability that it should be um, suppose given a k subsets what is the probability that there is a clique on it that was this probability because there are k into k minus 1 by 2 edges 1 by 2 is the probability that an edge occurs and then uh, we multiply by n choose k because uh, we, we were summing up over all possible k subsets. If any one of them has a clique then we have a k clique. So, then we can upper bound it by that. So, this can be this actual probability can be much smaller than this total sum, but then we are we can upper bound it this way and then we substituted this thing. This is replaced by n raised to k, this is replaced by 2 raised to k. For that as we calculated and so we needed uh, uh, the assumption that k is greater than or equal to 4 because k equal to 3 and less it is not happening. So, therefore, uh, when the but then below it is clear that 2 raised to uh, for r of k we know the values therefore, we do not have to uh, bother about it. So, and now substitute it and then we cancelled all the things and then we finally, so we also substituted n equal to 2 raised to k by 2. For instance, if you take a graph with 
uh, 2 raised to k by 2 vertices then we can substitute an equal to 2 raised to k by 2. So, then we saw that this cancels out and is because we have assumed that k is at least 4 we, we can see that this is less than equal to 1 by 2. So, this probability that g has uh, uh, g has a k k in it is less than equal to half sorry strictly less than half. So, here so it is not less than equal to this is strictly less than half because we have substituted with bigger values here right less than strictly less than. So, here somewhere here so for instance when we substituted by n raise to k itself we can put strictly less than right. So, strictly less than half. Now, similarly the same the we can calculate the probability that g has a s k in it. What is the probability that s k is the independent set of size uh, cardinality k that will also be strictly less than half. So, the probability that g has either a k k or an s k in it in it is actually less than equal to some of the these two probabilities this and this probability that it has a uh, k k in it and uh, the or the g has an s k in it. So, when you sum up it this is 1. So, this is strictly less than half sorry. So, because this was less strictly less than half this is less than half. So, the total will be 1. So, this is uh, the probability that either k k or s k in it will be strictly less than 1. So, there is a non zero probability namely 1 minus this value right that uh, g has neither a k k nor an s k in it. So, this is because we have taken um, n equal to 2 raise to k by 2 right the upper bound is this much. So, now we can infer that uh, the, the desired event namely there is no k k uh, and no s k in the graph has a probability of uh, probability which is non zero. That means, there should be a graph with uh, the desired property otherwise we would not get a non zero probability for that event. Recall that the, the events probability event corresponds to a set of outcomes the set of graphs in our case right. The, when I say that this property has a non zero probability or this event has a non zero probability there should be some graphs belonging to that otherwise we would not be able to get uh, a non zero value for that. It means that there exists a graph with the desired pro probability. So, the inference is finally that the e, if you fix your n equal to 2 raise to k by 2 or maybe less than that. Uh, less than equal to 2 raise to k by 2 we can always find a graph with the property that there is no k k in it no s k in it. So, the Ramsey number r of k has to be strictly greater than 2 raise to k by 2 as long as k is greater than equal to 3 this is what we have infer inferred. So, uh, this is the basic way we apply the probabilistic method. So, here we wanted a particular uh, graph with two desired pro properties that is there is no k k and there is no s k. So, we, we what we did is we looked at the com uh, the uh, complement events namely there is a k k there is no s k. So, one of them happening the probability one of probability that one of them at least happening is less than strictly less than 1. So, by we we could add up because we are looking either this or that. So, and then because it is strictly less than 1 there should be a probability for the desired event. Now, our uh, um, intention is to introduce some other techniques of probabilistic method. So, we will start with the notion of expectations. So, let us say. So, what is the mean or expected value of a random variable x? So, let us not get uh, too much into the details of uh, probability theory, but 
let me remind that random variable is a real valued function. But in our case, when we are considering the GNP model, especially when we are dealing with graphs, usually our random variables will be some of the graph parameters. It can be the chromatic number, it can be the independent cardinality of the maximum independent set or any such uh, usual graph parameter, which means that uh, typically uh, they will be non-negative value 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. Right? It can be the cardinality or the um, maximum clique so, or even number of edges. So, usually we will have uh, these x taking values 0, 1, 2, 3 etcetera. And uh, uh, the, the expectation of the random variable x is defined to be sigma of g element of g and p here for in our case g and p, p of g into x of g. So, for a given graph in g and p let x of g uh, be the value for one outcome say for one graph x of g be the value of that random variable multiply it with the probability of that particular outcome particular graph and then uh, sum over all such outcomes possible outcomes in g and p that will be the expectation of x. So, this is the usual definition of expectation we just wrote it in terms of the g and p probabilities uh, probability space that is all. Um, and now, so we will just look at some examples of uh, uh, finding how do we find expectations. So, there are um, one way of finding the expectation is to look at each possible graph and find out the probability of that graph and then find out the value of the random variable in it and multiply uh, the probability with the random variable and sum it over all these things. But many times this can be very tough. So, usually we go in a different way. So, to illustrate this point we will take up the following question. So, let us consider this question of uh, counting the number of k cycles in a graph. What is a k cycle? A k cycle means uh, say cycle with uh, exactly k vertices in it like this right. So, it is a simple k cycle. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 this is a 6 cycle. In a given graph g how many k cycles are there right. So, uh, now I am interested in this parameter x. So, that is the number of k cycles. in the random graph g. So, this is a random variable. Now, how do I find the expectation of x? One possible way is as uh, according to the to our uh, definition of expectation the way we have defined expectation. So, we can yeah. So, the way we have the x we can we can consider this probability for each g and then find the value of uh, the random variable namely how many k cycles are there in it and multiply them together and sum over all possible graphs. But then this is very tedious it is not uh, possible to do that in many cases. So, here uh, we will find out a different way what we are going to do is to define a lots of so called indicator random variables namely. So, given a graph g. So, we can find out uh, each possible cycle, each possible cycle means see for instance this can be a possible cycle. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 this is a possible 6 cycle. If all these edges are present in the random graph in the graph that we have selected. Uh, then this k cycle is present in it. So, for instance you can you can call it c 1 then associated with c 1 then I can define a random variable called x c 1 and then I can define that x c 1 equal to 1 if all the possible edges have appeared here. Otherwise, I can say that the the random value of the random variable is equal to 0 it is 
0 or 1 variable right. It is an indicator variable uh, which indicates whether this vertices this collection of vertices in this order provides a cycle or not right. And then it is very clear that if you can sum up the indicator random variables for all the possible such cycles uh, and whether because if the cycle has occurred it will count 1 otherwise it will count 0. When you sum up we will get exactly the number of uh, cycles that have occur occurred. So, there are two issues here how many such possibilities we have to consider. So, one possibility so for instance we, we, we consider n vertices then there are k cycles we are interested in. So, from n vertices we can get uh, n p k uh, k tuples or maybe the sequences sequences of length k. So, for instance I can take k uh, objects from n things and then I can order them in a certain way n p k ways we can order them that is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into like n minus k plus 1 ways we can order them. If you order them, but then will it always correspond? So, all of them corresponds to distinct cycles for instance if I get this is 1, this is 10 this is 11 say this is 9 and this is 8. So, for instance k is equal to 5. So, this is a cycle, but then you can see that. So, if I had considered so for instance I can say that 1 10 uh, 11 9 8 can give rise to a 5 cycle, but then if I had considered 10 11 9 8 1 that also give rise to the same cycle for the same order, but then we started from a different place that is all. So, we could have for as in the case of a k cycle case we could have started from any of the k k of the any of the k numbers and we could have ordered them that they all of them correspond to the same cycle right. For instance like instance uh, for instance this sequence and this sequence correspond to the same cycle because the same cycle will come, but just that we started enumerating from here or say in, uh, first we started enumerating 1, 10, 11, 9, 8 the next time we are enumerating 9, 10, 11, 9, 8, 1 that is all. The another possible way the same same cycle can occur is when you enumerate say 10, 1, 8, 9 like this in the opposite order in the opposite order also or maybe this can be could have been enumerated as 1, 8, 9, 11, uh, 10 right. So, for starting with each vertex I could have count I could have listed the members either in the clockwise order or in the anti clockwise order there are 2k possible ways. So, this is an over counting for the number of possibilities you have to divide it by 2k because each uh, cy actual cycle may correspond to 2k uh, different such sequencing right. So, therefore, the n p k by 2k possibilities are there n into n minus 1 um, into n minus k plus 1 divided by 2 k which we, we can even we, we can also write it as uh, n k this n p k it is another notation for n p k divided by 2 k possibilities are there. Now, for each of them I can define a indicator and random variable say x 1 for the first among this x 2 for the second among this. So, x so n choose k by 2 k for the last one right and this each of them will become 0 or 1 depending on whether that cycle uh, appears or not whether that depending on whether that cycle appears in our random graph or not. And now the question is what is the probability that x i is equal to 1 what is the probability that x i equal to 0. For x i equal to 1 the probability is uh, calculated like this because for this collect this sequence of vertices 
we need this edge to be present, this edge to be present, this edge to be present, this edge, this edge and this edge to be present. All the edges have to be present. That will happen with p to the power k probability and this will definitely happen with 1 minus p to the power k possibility, right. Because this edge occurs with probability p, this edge occurs with probability p and this also, this also, this also, this also and uh, they should all occur uh, simultaneously and because they are all independent events, the probability that they all occur simultaneously is p to the power k. So, now uh, what we see is the expectation of x i is equal to uh, p to the power k into 1 because random variable takes 2 values and 1 minus p to the power k into 0 and this term does not contribute anything. So, the expectation is just p to the power k. Now, what is the expectation of x? So, expectation of x is essentially expectation of x 1 plus x 2 plus so, x and choose k by 2 and p k by 2 k, right. So, all the random variables are to be added. As we have observed already, this random variable essentially is the, um, the random variable which counts the number of cycles and each of these random variables indicates whether a given possible cycle has occurred or not and this many possible cycles are. When I sum them up, all these things which have become 1 will contribute. That means, they actually how many cycles have occurred, they will uh, be counted and that is exactly this x. Therefore, x is equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus this thing. This is the trick and then the expectation of uh, x can be counted by finding this thing. The one good property about expectation is that it is linear. That means, this expectation is essentially the sum of the individual expectations. The expectation of the sum of random variables will be uh, like we can calculate like this where we can simply sum the expectation of these things, right. So, this is expectation of x 2 k. So, this is this is the way, right. So, if you sum up all of them. So, which means that each of them is p raised to k. So, I can simply uh, multiply by p to the power k or oh, n p k by 2 k into p to the power k will be the expected value of that. This is an easy, easy way of calculating the expectation of x. So, uh, what we have now showed is a method to calculate the expectation of this random variable x which is <coughs> counting which counts the number of cycles in the uh, random graph, k cycles in the random graph. So, the again to repeat the trick is rather than uh, using the direct definition namely for each i each outcome find the value of the random variable and multiply the prob multiply with the probability of the random uh, that particular outcome and some of our all outcomes. We rather uh, do a different count kind of counting that means within each uh, item what are the possible uh, possibilities what are the possible objects which can uh, be counted towards our random variable for each of them we will define a indicator random variable then we will find the expectation of that and then we sum over that. So, this idea of the indicator random variable is a very commonly used technique. The only new notion we have introduced here is the linearity of expectation namely when you have two random variables say x and y and then if you can multiply with the scalar a x and then b into y this is essentially e into expectation of x plus b into expectation of y. This uh, proving this is trivial in fact. So, if you try it you can prove it yourself, but then uh, this is a very useful property in most of these calculations we will not be for instance if we do uh, use the usual definition for this thing it may be very difficult. But on the other hand once you uh, expand like this calculating this and this can be much easier and then we will be able to calculate this using this. So, um, so this is this property namely the linearity of expectation is a very useful property. And uh, uh, 
Um, now that we have introduced the expectations, um, we will introduce one inequality related with expectation which becomes very helpful. This is called uh, the Markov inequality. So, the Markov inequality says let x be a x greater than or equal to 0 be a random variable and okay, it need not be in g and p, but let us say it is a positive random variable and then um, consider a value greater than 0, right. Then the probability that x greater than or equal to 0, it is a greater than or equal to a is always less than or equal to expectation of x by a. This is the important thing. So, we are considering random variables which takes positive values here and then we are claiming that the probability, this probability namely probability that the random variable takes value greater than a is less than equal to um, the expectation of expectation of x by a, expectation of x by a. So, the proof of this can be easily seen from the definition of the expectation because this expectation of x is essentially uh, you can see that this expectation is when you sum over all possible outcomes uh, and uh, the with and multiply by the value of the random variable and then um, and the probability. So, we can in fact see this as sigma over the value of the random variable right. So, the uh, so the probability that so of case for instance when you when you discard the values which below uh, a some of them are discarded we can easily see that this is essentially um, probability of x greater than a. So, all the we are considering only the uh, the values of x which are greater than or equal to this and now uh, each of the values um, the corresponds to something greater than a right. So, therefore, uh, so this will be greater than or equal to So, what we are going to do is the expectation of x. So, for each possible value of x, we have to multiply it with the corresponding probability. The what is the probability that x takes this value into this probability, and then uh, we sum them together. So, suppose we drop all the values, uh, all the values of this random variable, which which are uh, less than equal to a then and consider only those probabilities which are uh, greater than this. So, this is definitely this expectation is definitely greater than equal to probability that x greater than a and uh, into a because all the values are at least a here x is a or more right for all of them together the probability is this much then I am substituting by a here. Therefore, uh, this will this probability alone will be probability of x greater than a will be less than equal to expectation of x by a this is what. So, this is just from the definition of the expectation and the fact that uh, a is uh, greater than equal to 0 you can uh, get this from there. So, this Markov inequality which is um, uh, which gives me gives us an upper bound for the probability that x greater than equal to a in terms of its expectation is quite useful in many situations we will be using it. Now, uh, the <coughs> uh, for illustrate all these things the expectations the use of expectation the use of Markov inequality uh, what we are going to do is we will uh, we will take one interesting question um, which was 
one of the earliest questions in the um, in this area which was proved by erdosh so what is this question so it consider this question so do we have consider consider this question um, suppose we are given an r an integer k and we are looking for a graph with girth greater than k girth means what girth means the shortest cycle length the length of the shortest cycle should be greater than k and also another property is required for the graph namely the chromatic number of the graph is also uh, greater than k two numbers you can always so for instance the question can be asked differently you can say that i want the girth greater than k and the chromatic number greater than k but that is fine we can always uh, um, change by taking the bigger of the two and then ask this question where both the both values are same so so i want a graph uh, that the girth is greater than or equal to something and the chromatic number is is it possible to find a graph always like that we i'm allowing you to make it big that is not a problem it is you can always decide that the number of uh, vertices in the graph is big but then is it always possible why why do we think that it may not be possible that's because these are kind of contradictory properties when i say the girth is greater than k uh, if you look from one vertex you will see a tree like structure around it because there is no short cycles so you have to go some distance and it will look like this for instance so if i look from this thing so so you will see a structure like this to some distance uh, until k by 2 there won't be any if you go they if, for instance if you see a structure like this that means there's a short cycle here right so to some distance you won't see any edge uh, blocking the tree so it means you may look like you, if you give a color to this thing you can give a color to these vertices and then you can give the same color here so it is like a bipartite graph it's two colorable graph locally two colorable so does it mean that somehow if not two so can i use three color or four color or some constant number of colors a small number of colors so that it can be colored because from looking from one vertex it look like there is not much conflict in the vicinity of that vertex from each vertex it is the case it gives us a feeling that probably the chromatic number of this thing is high that's why we asked the other question can i keep the chromatic number of the graph also high i want both this conflicting parameter to be high when the chromatic number is high we may get the feeling that the graph is dense and then uh, because it is dense there may be short cycle in it right so that's why the the other condition is conflicting that means we want the chromatic number high and also the girth high there should not be any short cycle in it so intuitively these are uh, two conditions which are kind of conflicting with each other so the uh, this question was not easily answered while it is very easy to uh, or it is not very difficult to cook up uh, graphs for small uh, values of these parameters but then when uh, in the arbitrary case when if if you allow any k so how do you prove how do you prove that such graphs exist so erdos very cleverly uh, used uh, the probabilistic method to prove that such graph exists graphs exists this is the next interesting theorem that we want to do so to prove this thing we f- uh, we first will see how so how we can use the probabilistic method see what is the difference here from the previous problem the previous problem also asked for uh, two properties together that means we don't want a complete graph on k vertices in the graph and also we don't want an independent set on k vertices in the graph this uh, we wanted to coexist both these properties we wanted together uh, so for that what we did is we considered the complement property the is a k k in the graph com- complete graph on k vertices the is a uh, the other event was the is an independent set of k vertices in the graph and then either this or the other one of these events uh, can happen with probability 
uh, equal to sum of the individual probabilities at most right. Then if this sum was less than 1 then we know that the complement even maybe neither uh, k k nor s k occurs uh, can happen with certain finite probability right. So, uh, this so the same technique why does not uh, why cannot we apply in this case also here also there are two properties I want the girth to be high I want the chromatic number to be high let us consider the probability that the girth will be uh, the probability that the random graph that I have drawn uh, the, the girth of it will be small right there will be a certain probability for that. And then consider the probability that uh, the independence sorry the chromatic number of it if at all if I can directly deal with it independent chromatic number of uh, this thing is also small less than k right. And then sum the probabilities and show that it is less than 1. But it so happens that if I fix p equal to half this will not be possible. So, but then why do you want to fix p equal to half try to fix p the suitable p that is the thing. How, how can I fix a suitable value of p <coughs> so that the both these events will happen together with some some uh, non zero <coughs> probability. So, to uh, do this thing <coughs> we to do this thing what we are going to do is to first consider corresponding some uh, we have to adjust this probability value p. So, but it so happens that if p is reduced uh, very much then uh, the chromatic number will increase. How do you find the chromatic number is the what we the only handle we have to deal with chromatic number is to show that the biggest independent set in it will be small because if the biggest independent set in it is small the chromatic number has to be high because a, any color class has to be an independent set. If the each color class is small then we need many colors right then we need many colors. So, we will try to keep the independent set size small, but if the probability p is small for instance if I take p is equal to some c by n where c is a constant uh, we can see that there will be large independent sets. But on the other hand if I keep the probability high so that I can keep the num the largest independent set small then we can see that there is surely we are going to get short cycles. So, if we try uh, if you if you uh, work out the calculations for various p's we will see that this such a p will not exist we cannot make it happen together both avoiding the cycle short cycles and independent sets. So, then what will you do? So, to get a feel of this thing it so happens that if uh, so, when for instance if I want the alpha to be greater than or equal to n by so the probability that the if I want the probability that the biggest independent set size is greater than or equal to n by k should tend to 0 suppose. If, if that is what I want what should be the probability value I should give. So, it turns out that if I give uh, the probability gray p greater than or equal to 6 k log n by n then we can make this happen. But then it, unfortunately this is already too high for the other event. So, why, why am I trying to make alpha greater than or equal to n by 2 k if anybody uh, is confused about it this is because if I prove this this will immediately imply that chi greater than or equal to n by alpha equal to n by n by 2 k right n by n by 2 k is greater than equal to 2 k. In fact, I do not need 2 k I can by uh, put n by k. So, even n by 2 k. 
so here uh, this is what we are going to first prove but uh, so to prove this thing so how do we do that we have already done uh, certain calculations for that before so the because the probability that there exists an independent set of greater than n by 2 k right that will be <coughs> let us say greater than or equal to some t value. So, that will be uh, we know that this probability is less than or equal to so we can we can actually calculate it because so suppose you take the uh, a set of size t let us see if I said take a set of size t and uh, uh, what is the probability that there is an independent set. So, because we can always say that uh, the all of them right there are t into t minus 1 by 2 edges. So, all of them should be missing. So, then the probability is q into t minus 1 by t, but then uh, the probability that such an independent set will occur uh, is at most n choose t times q into this thing. So, n choose t times q raised to t into t minus 1 by 2 this is this is the probability right. Then uh, we see that this is a at most n raised to t. So, we can just discard the n choose t part and this is q into uh, t into t minus 1 by 2. What is q? q being 1 minus q is equal to 1 minus p here right because p is the probability of an edge to occur q is equal to 1 minus p is the probability that that edge will not occur right. This you can write it as n q into uh, sorry n into q raised to t minus 1 by 2 all power t right. Now, we want to know when will this tend to 0, when will this become 0 for large enough n as n tends to in infinity. If I want this probability to tend 0, uh, what should be the value of q? In fact, I am interested in the value of p that is what. So, it so happens that if I can uh, take for instance if I want to show that n into q raised to t minus 1 by 2 uh, is less than 1 right or I, I may even want to show that this tends to 0. So, uh, let us take uh, q is equal to 1 minus p that is less than equal to e raised to minus p. So, because I am using this inequality 1 minus x is less than equal to e raised to minus x right this is a useful inequality which is usually used in this kind of calculations. So, here q is equal to 1 minus p that is less than equal to e raised to minus p. Um, so, I can substitute here in this thing. So, n into e raised to minus p into t minus 1 by 2 right. t minus 1 by 2 this is what. I want this to tend to 0 right. Now, what is the correct value I can put for this. So, it so happens that if you take p equal to 6 k log n by n and uh, t equal to n by 2 k this will come right. 
you have to take p greater than or equal to c. any any value greater than 6 k log n by n and then so if i want to prove that uh, suppose if my the kind of independent set i was trying to see was n by 2k then we can show that uh, this will tend to this will tend to zero you have to substitute it here and uh, do the necessary cancellations you can show that this will uh, be equal to yeah so you can you can substitute by n into so if you cancel out we will get um, n raised to minus 3 by 2 into e raised to p by 2 this will become p because p is at most 1 we can put it as root e by root n and this will definitely tend to 0 as n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity so therefore uh, so though i have skipped some calculations so to because we are we have to finish now so it can it can be easily checked out by the students that uh, when i substitute p equal to this and t equal to this thing this will tend to 0 so what we have now told is that if i had selected uh, the value of p to be greater than 6k log n uh, then i am sure with very high probability that we are not going to have an independent set of cardinality n by 2k that means my chromatic number is going to be at least 2k but now what we have to verify is that is it true that uh, the girth also will be high that means there won't be any short cycle but this will not happen with this value so we will have to uh, to make sure that the girth is high we have to find a different technique that is what we will describe in the next class since we do not have time in this uh, class we will describe in the next class thank you. Thank you.